to plugins on WordPress.org and is the most popular SEO plugin in the WordPress space. They pioneered a lot of the features that are now standard in SEO plugins. The Yoast team are also experts in SEO. They have an amazing blog that covers every aspect of SEO and a ton of related topics like user experience, analytics, and content creation. They offer classes, certifications, and their newsletter is incredibly helpful. We'll be using their Yoast SEO plugin because it has every feature that you need to get started and it's very extensible. If you have specific needs like e-commerce, videos, or local SEO, they have extensions for all of these. They also have a lot of related features built into their main plugin, like sitemaps. This keeps your site lean since you don't have to install a ton of plugins. Let's go to our admin, and then go to plugins, add new, and this is a good point to pause. And if you previously installed and activated all-in-one SEO pack earlier in this course, now is a good time to disable that plugin, at least temporarily, while we play with this other SEO plugin. Let's go to the search box and type in Yoast SEO. Then click Install Now. And Activate. That's basically it. You'll see a new item in the menu, and you'll see an icon in the admin bar as well. We'll take a look at those in the future video. One of the neat features about Yoast SEO, and one of the reasons we're showing this plugin second, is that it includes a really nice import feature. If you have previously configured an SEO plugin, it'll ask you to import those settings into Yoast. If you skipped ahead and you don't have any settings to import from another plugin, then you can skip this video. Since we already configured some settings in our all-in-one SEO pack, I want to turn that plugin back on for the transfer. Under Plugins, All-in-one SEO pack, I'll click Activate. And you might see some messages from either All-in-one SEO pack or Yoast that lets you know that you shouldn't have two SEO plugins activated at the same time. Now let's go to Yoast SEO down here. And then under Yoast, let's click on Tools. On the Tools page, we can click Import and Export. Then we can click on the tab Import from other SEO plugins. And here we see all of the steps that we need to create to actually import these settings. If you're working on a real site, you definitely want to create a backup of your site before you import the data into your database. Step two will migrate general site settings and settings on each post. If you only had to redo the general site-wide settings, it would only take you a few minutes to redo all those settings. So it probably isn't worth the import. But if you've added SEO information to each of your posts, that can be really putsy to redo. This import feature solves a lot of those problems. If you don't see your plugin as an option here, make sure that it's still turned on. Then we can click Import. You should see a successful notice up here saying that the information was imported. We can now scroll down and it's telling us to check our data. So I'm going to go to one of the posts that we configured earlier in this course. I'll scroll up in a new tab. I'll click All Posts. I'll go down to our pumpkin pie post, which we configured earlier. I'll scroll down to the Yoast SEO settings, and here we can see the SEO title and the meta description that we configured earlier. So it looks like all those specific 
post settings have been migrated. I'll go back to the import wizard. And now, step five, cleanup. So once we're sure that all this information has been imported correctly, we can delete the original data. Let's do that by clicking Clean. For our site, since we only optimized one post and configured a few site-wide settings, we didn't have to import. But if you optimized an entire site, this process can save you hours of work. We've installed the plugin and imported a few settings. Let's click on Yoast in the menu, and this will take us to a screen that shows us notifications. One of them is prompting us to go through the configuration wizard. We could configure each setting manually, but this configuration wizard has a very useful step-by-step -step approach. So let's go through that wizard. I'll click the link to get started. The first step is asking us if we want to configure the plugin or watch their videos on how to configure it. This wizard is easy enough to go through step by step, so let's do that. The next step is about your environment, which means is it a live site or something that's under development. If your site is a live site, make sure to select option A. But I'm going to select option B to show you how to set up a site that's not meant to go live yet and will launch it later. Let's click next. This next step tells search engines what your site is about. You can select whichever option fits best. It doesn't have to be perfect. This just gives search engines a bit more context. Let's click next. This page tells Google if you're a company or a person. This can help search engines display the best information on search engine result pages. I'm going to go ahead and open a new incognito window, and I'm going to search for someone famous. As a quick example, Google knows that Thomas Jefferson is a person and it displays biographical data like the date of birth. If I type in a company, Google knows that it is a company and a restaurant and it shows me a logo, nutritional information, and stock prices. You can't tell search engines what to display, but you can give them the most information. I'll close this window and we'll click company. Let's type in the name of our company and we can upload an image for the logo. I'll use one of these images that we already uploaded and click next. On this screen, we can add all of our social media accounts. You don't have to add each one. Topsy Turvy has Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest, so I'll add those. This adds metadata for our social media accounts, meaning that they're going to look a little bit nicer when someone shares a page on those accounts. And these social media profiles can show up on the search engine results page. Let's click next. This page controls which post types will show up in these search engines. For most sites, you're going to want pages and posts to show up. If you have any custom post types like recipes, or something else, you can select if those show up or not. Most of the time, WordPress plugin creators are really smart and have taken care of this for you. So you shouldn't even see any sort of private information on this list. But if you do, you can always turn it off. I'll click next. This step controls if this site has multiple authors. If you have one company account that posts all of the pages 
and blog posts, you can disable the author archives, which WordPress creates by default. This prevents some duplicate content, but if you do have multiple authors, it's a really nice feature to search by the author. So just pick whichever works best for you. This step lets you connect Yoast SEO with Google Search Console, which used to be Google Webmaster Tools. This is really useful because I never log into Google Search Console. So being able to have Yoast pull in any errors from Google Search Console and display them to me in my WordPress site is super useful. The type of errors you might see could be something like you have a typo in a link in one of your blog posts, which now goes to a 404 page on your site. That's obviously not a good user experience. So as soon as Google notices the error, they'll log it in Google Search Console and Yoast will pull it from Google Search Console into your WordPress site. I definitely recommend doing this. One thing to note before you click this button is that you already have to have your site in Google Search Console to connect it. If you don't already have your site added to Google Search Console, you can do this step later. Let's click Get Google Authorization Code. Make sure you're logged into the right account. We'll give Yoast SEO permission. And now we copy this link, close this window, and paste it in here. Now we have a drop down, and we can select any of the sites that we've added to Google Search Console. One thing to note here is that the www and non-www version of your site are different as far as Search Console is concerned. The same thing with HTTP and HTTPS. So make sure when you're adding your site to Google Search Console that you add only one instance of your site and that it has the right HTTP and if you have www, make sure that that's included as well. Let's click Next. This section is just aesthetics. You've probably already entered your site title. If you wanted to change that, you can do so here. And then you can change the separator. Ultimately, this doesn't matter, so I'll just go with the default. Yoast has a good newsletter. And if you want more SEO information, you can sign up, but I'll skip it since my inbox is already exploding. This next section promotes some other premium products. We'll talk about these later in this course. And that's it, we're done. It doesn't feel like much, but search engines know a lot more about our site than they did a few minutes ago. Click close and we can start optimizing SEO for specific pages and posts. Now that we've configured the site-wide SEO settings, we can jump into arguably the most useful feature in Yoast SEO, and that's the ability to modify your SEO for individual posts and pages. Before we do that, I want to point out there are a few notifications from Yoast. One of which is an error. Yoast is pointing out that our site isn't visible by search. This likely happened because in the welcome wizard, I selected staging site. If you have an error like this, make sure you fix this before launch. You can go to your reading settings, and then make sure to turn off discourage search engines from indexing the site. For right now, I'll dismiss this error. So let's go into one of our posts. I'll go to posts, and then a cake decorator's essential tools. We already have a title and content for this post, so it's just about ready. If we scroll down, we can see the Yoast SEO meta box, which has a search engine results page preview, a readability analysis, 
and a place to put a keyword or key phrase for this post. Let's start with the SERP preview right here. The title and meta description are what convince the user to click from the search page over to our site. So both of these should be very compelling. Right now, I see a Cake Decorator's Essential Tools, which is okay, but I think we can make this a bit more compelling. I'm going to use a headline tool built by CoSchedule to craft a headline that really grabs people. You will need to give them your email address to use this tool, so be prepared for that. But I find it a good enough tool that it's worth it. Let's put the original title into the tool. I'll go back here and copy the title and paste it in. Let's put the original title through the tool. It gets a score of 47. Now writing headlines can be an entire course. We could spend hours talking about it, and we could spend hours crafting headlines for just this one post. But with just a few minutes of work, I think we can write something better. You can read through these guidelines to learn a little bit more about how to write a better headline. Or there is the Writing Headlines course in the library. After reading through these guidelines, I'm going to try a different headline tools I use every day to decorate beautiful cakes. And that takes me from a 47 to a 64. Still not perfect, but much better. And I literally did this in a couple of minutes. For right now, let's copy this headline into our post and then check out the meta description. I'll replace our title right here. And we can see our new title right here. Now let's edit this meta description. The meta description, if left to the default, is usually just the first sentence of your post, so it's usually pretty bad. For a post like this, I want to continue where the headline left off. Maybe something like, I'll click Edit Snippet here and just start typing. Each of my tools saves me hours and hours of manual labor. They range from the affordable to the high end. This wraps up the preview area. We can close this. This next section right here is the focus word or the focus key phrase. Think of the keyword as what you'd like people to type into a search engine to find your site. Now, keyword research is another massive topic. We have an extensive course here in the library. Check out SEO Keyword Strategy. But for right now, let's go with an obvious keyword or key phrase like cake decorating tools. And this is a good time to point out that keywords don't have to be just one word. In fact, they're usually a string of several words. If we tab out of this box, this is where Yoast SEO really shines. The plugin will give us a list of best practices and rank them from red to orange to green. You want to get as many green lights as possible, but you don't need to obsess. You can tweak the title some more, tweak the wording a bit, and maybe even add some links and images. The one light I try to get green every single time is to make sure that I haven't used that key phrase before. You don't want pages to compete for the same keyword. If someone types in cake decorating tools, Google should know exactly which page to display for your site. That doesn't mean you won't ever have multiple results on one SERP, but you want to avoid competing with yourself. On my personal site, I tend to get about three quarters of the light green, a few orange, and a few red. We can close this. And then the last thing I want to point out is the readability score. 
Again, you don't need to obsess over the score, but do take notice. I tend to write with a lot of passive voice instead of active voice, and tools like this help me catch those mistakes. Now we can close this, save the post, and we're done. If you have other posts on your site, you can go through them and optimize them. This is the bulk of SEO. Know what keywords are searching for, and then have a page on your site that's optimized for that specific word or phrase. Use headline tools to write compelling headlines and try to get three quarters of those bullets green. In the previous video, we ran this analysis on one of our blog posts. We put a key phrase or keyword into our Yoast plugin and we got it back. Right now, now, we only have a couple of green bullet points, and the rest are orange or red. So there's a lot of optimizing that we can do. Yoast takes SEO best practices and puts them in this plugin. I found that these recommendations are both reliable and practical. Let's go through a couple of these and see how we can make some optimizations for our site. We can click on any of these and learn a little bit more about them. A couple that are easy are slug stop words. We have a stop word in our slug. Search engines don't love stop words like to, and, but, or stuff like that. So let's remove that. We can scroll up a little bit and we can click on edit snippet and we can see our slug right here. We can remove a from the slug which makes the URL a little bit cleaner and will make Google happier. We can see that that orange bullet point went away. We have another orange light right here for image alt attributes. When you don't add an alt description to an image, you will see this bullet. We can go over here to our featured image, click on it, and then add an alt description to this image. You should do this for every single one of your images. I'll call this baking pans and cookie cutters. If we had more time, I'd add more images to this post and I'd make sure they all have alt descriptions. If you don't have any images or if the images don't all have alt descriptions, you might still see this warning. We also see right here the meta description length is too short. And we can probably write a little bit more to number one, make this message more compelling, and number two, maximize the space. Let's go back up to our meta description right here. And since our key phrase is cake decorating tools, I can say each of my cake decorating tools saves me hours and hours of manual labor. Notice this indicator is now green because I'm in the optimal length. If I delete this word, we're now in the orange zone. So let's go back. This also fixed a red bullet up here that mentioned that we didn't actually have our key phrase in our meta description. Now we took care of that as well. Now let's fix some of these problems. There are two problems that we can fix at one point. Key phrase in the title and SEO title width. We don't have our key phrase in the title and the title is too long. So let's take care of both of these. We can add cake decorating tools I use every day to the title. I'll scroll up to top of my blog post. Cake decorating tools. I use every day. We can scroll back down and we can see that the title is now the optimum length. And I have cake decorating tools, which is the key phrase we're looking for as the first part of our headline, which is a good practice. And those problems went away. If your post title is still too long, you can click into the title box and delete the site title. 
This is enough optimizing for right now. Originally, we had four green bullets and now we have seven. We had a lot more problems and a lot more improvements. Update this post and now we're done. Again, I want to emphasize this might feel like a lot of work at first, but you'll very quickly internalize these best practices and you'll start to do it automatically. In addition to adding SEO information to each page, we can also add information for social networks. If we scroll down to the Yoast SEO meta box, on the Edit Post page, we can click on the Social Sharing icon right here. And then we can configure information per social network. If you don't see anything here, make sure that you've Open Graph enabled under Yoast SEO, Social, and then Facebook. If this is enabled, you should see that tab and all the features. While we're here, we can also set a default image for any of our posts in case none is set. It's worth adding something here, even if it's just your logo. Just a title is a bit lackluster on social networks, and we really want to make sure our content stands out. So go ahead and add a default image. I'll reuse an image that we uploaded earlier. I'll click Save Changes. And now let's go back to our post. Back on the edit page, we can specify title, description, and image for Facebook. Facebook uses a standard called Open Graph, which most other social networks also use. So if you specify an image for Facebook, It'll also work for Pinterest and many other social networks. The same goes for the title and description. There's one setting I want to double check. If we go back to social, Yoast SEO, social, we can click on the Twitter tab. I like making sure the default card type is set to summary with large image. When someone shares your link on Twitter, they know that you prefer a summary plus image tweet, but ultimately their algorithm decides what happens. I'll go back to my edit post page. So now if any of these pages are ever shared on social networks, these networks know how to find the title, description, and image. Truth be told, I rarely adjust the titles and descriptions for a specific platform. I try to come up with the best overall title and description and optimize them right here. But if you really want to optimize each network, you can customize the content for each one. 